welcome to the CEO Camper Podcast, where we talk about being a badass CEO in business and life, but also getting out into nature more and making it really easy. I'm your host, Jessica Ryder, a 14-year veteran of camping and have 16 years of business driving teams and companies to purposeful growth under my belt. I am here to help you get out into nature, reset yourself, so you can continue to be that badass CEO. So let's dive in to the CEO Camper Podcast. Today, I'm really excited for my guest, Dr. Matt Chalmers. Um, he is a just all around amazing guy. I met him in April of this year. He spoke at an event that I went to all about women's health and you know just keeping women in general moving in the right direction. And so I reached out to him because I know one of the things that he will um, recommend for patients is actually getting into nature. So he runs a um, wellness center in Texas, and part of his practice is really this concierge service for high-end professionals. So CEOs, entrepreneurs, business leaders, like he runs a concierge service for them to make sure they are operating at the highest level that they possibly can. Um, and he does this not only just for the CEOs, um, but a lot of times what happens is one person will come in and start feeling a ton better. And then all of a sudden the entire leadership team is coming to Dr. Chalmers to get help. So I sat down with him and we really talked health um, and how just even getting into nature sometimes can help reset that circadian rhythm. So enjoy this episode. Um, it was a great, great conversation. I am so grateful that he was um, willing to share some of his knowledge and his insight. He's extremely passionate about just helping people stay on the right track. And again, specifically like you guys, specifically the the leaders, the entrepreneurs that are running multiple things and just need to stay healthy. So enjoy this conversation. If you want to reach out to Dr. Chalmers, I'll definitely make sure all of his stuff is in the show notes so that you all can reach out to him because he does um, his services nationwide. So enjoy this and uh, yeah, reach out to Dr. Chalmers if you need help. Each other from there. Perfect. All right. So Dr. Traumers and I had the pleasure of meeting back in April. Um, he spoke at an event I was at and really honestly woke myself up to, Ooh, I got to dig a little deeper. One of my goals this year was optimal health, not just aesthetics, but optimal what's going on on the inside. And he had a lot of insight. So I brought him on today because again, there's just so much knowledge here and I wanted to, to tap into it. So Tell me, Dr. Chalmers, I know you've been in practice for what, a little over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about you, your story and how you get where you are. So I, <clears throat> I run a concierge wellness um, practice and we have a bunch of uh, medical pediatricians. We have a bunch of medical family functional medicine docs. We've got hormone specialists. We have I work with a bunch of surgeons and all sorts of cardiologists and all sorts of things. Um, and it is, it is a level of service that um, most people don't get to because the way that the insurance is normally set up and the way payments usually set up, um, the, you know, the, the golden rule, the man with all the gold makes the rules. So the insurance companies dictate to a lot of doctors how things are going to be done. Mm -hmm. And so what ended up happening uh, the way I broke out of that is there's kind of a fun story. Uh, I was treating a patient seven or eight years ago. Uh, the dude was 60, 62, early 60s, sold his company for $22 million, uh, probably worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $30 million at that point. And uh, he told me that. He was like, yeah, I just sold my business and this and that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. And I was like, what are you going to do? I was like, I would go to Italy. There's this really cool trip where you go over and they start in Normandy and you go through and you do the World War II thing. And you end up in Italy and I go, and it's going to be, and he goes, stop. He goes, I can't get to the top of the stairs without my knees hurting so bad I got to sit down. He's like, I can't walk the dogs around the block without getting tired. So I'm not going to Italy. He's like, there's some restaurants I've been really wanting to try. And there's some shows I hear, I've heard about that I want to catch up on. Because I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So I walk out the room and freaked out. 
Cause I'm like, that's the path I was on. Like it was work, you know, 14 hour days, five, six days a week, build this great practice. And then I'm done. And I was like, I can't be that guy anymore. And I said, I have to make sure that, you know, my body works, that I have clarity of mind, that I sleep well, that my heart's not going to stop. Like, how do I figure all this stuff out? And so I started reaching out to my cardiologist teams. My, you know, as a neurologist, I reached out to my fellow, my colleague, neuro, a neurologist. And we, I started building this plan for me of how I'm not going to die. And so I'd ask enough questions. I built enough stuff. One of my buddies, one of my medical colleagues, uh, sent me a patient. And he was like, hey, man, you got you to gotta talk to this guy. He's like, I don't, everything looks fine. I don't know what to do. So this guy comes in. He says, uh, my business partner was the healthiest guy I've ever known. Six pack, played soccer three days a week. He just dropped dead of a heart attack on the soccer field. I have two little girls. I can't die. You have to help me. Wow. And uh, it was a fun, interesting meeting. Yeah. Um, so, but he brings me his blood work and everything is perfect. Uh, but it wasn't. We did, we ran a bunch of tests that nobody ever runs, sleep studies, calcium CTs, sticker studies, all sorts of things. Found out that he had uh, placking in his arteries, even though his cholesterol was fine. Placking in his arteries, massive sleep issues, low testosterone, um, nutritional stuff was all sorts of whacked out, food allergies that he was didn't, not aware of. So we, we fixed all that stuff. Um, he lost 30 pounds of fat, radically changed his body and his life in about six, eight months. Um, and so he started sending people in, and that's literally how this whole thing started. I got, I got scared for me and my family, acquired all this knowledge for us. And then started applying it to a bunch of high level guys who could afford it. And that's just how it happened. You know, you, you help one guy, you find one crazy thing in one guy and they tell all their buddies and all of a sudden that's what you do. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of the, the, the baseline thrust of where we're at and kind of what we do. Um, and so it's, it's been real fun. Yeah. So you really kind of take that, um, is it, is it fair to say holistic approach? I know that word is different for everybody. It, um, it is. Lots of times people confuse that with natural. Um, yeah. And it's it's not. So I have a lot of Eastern medicine colleagues and friends. And I have a lot of Western medicine colleagues and friends. And they both tease me because they're like, you're the only guy who's going to talk about coffee enemas, you know, Eastern medicine, meridian lines, and injectable testosterone in the same visit. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, because we need all those things. Like your bone density, your sex function, your your energy, your you know muscle mass, like all that's testosterone. Your liver is the most important organ in your body. That's what cleans everything. Mm-hmm. So you got to do coffee enemas to clean that. And so yeah, it's, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the entire body and how it all works together and how nothing's left out. And so holistic is probably the very best way to describe it. Yeah. So I know you recently wrote a book called Pillars of Wellness. So tell me a little bit because I really liked that approach. Um, And so tell me a little bit about the book and, and how you attack wellness from that point. So it's funny because I always feel a little more of a physiologist than anything else, because my whole family is engineers. Like my dad, my mom, my brother, my uncle, my grandfather, they're all engineers. And I I am too, at the end of the day, it's just, we work on different machines. Like, Mm -hmm. so I work on the body, they work on elaborate oil machines and it's so it's it's okay how does this machine operate and so the book is talking about the biomechanical pieces so you know exercise posture how the body moves how to get how to make things not hurt anymore you know we have really easy simple fixes for plantar fasciitis and carpal tunnel and frozen shoulder and stuff like that so because it's an understanding of the neurology and the biomechanics of the body and then we have a piece on chemistry which is you know hormones nutrition supplementation but the other piece is that we talk a lot about the psychology of things. Um, it's how we, how we decide we're going to make it to the day, how we decide how we're going to choose the people we associate with. It's you know, how we're going to drive our business and drive ourselves and drive our lives uh, through the psychology. And then we have a piece on spirituality. And the spirituality isn't, re- I should have come up with a better term, but it's not Christianity or Buddhism or islam or something like that it's it's how we connect with people in the world and Mm -hmm. what the funny thing is is that i you know 
have, being the person I am, looking the way I do, you know, doing what I do, I would have thought everybody would have come in and talked to me about exercise and weightlifting and supplementation and that type of thing. 80% of people have been asking me about the spiritual and the psychological piece, personal development, that type of thing. Um, and I get a bunch of guys in here who go through the whole process. We clean them up. We get them all better. And they sit here and they kind of like, you can tell there's something going on. And you're like, what? What, what is going on? They're like, I don't know. Like, I worked with you. I feel better than I've ever felt in my life. My relationship with my wife is amazing. My kids are amazing. I make tons of money. I don't know what it is. There's just something going on. And I'm like, that's your spiritual pillar. Mm -hmm. like you're, you're missing that piece. I'm like, when was the last time you went out and mentored? When did you take all the experience that you created in the past 30 years of doing business and building what you've done? When was the last time you shared that with somebody? And they just got to sit there and they stare at me and they're like, can't I just write checks? And I'm like, yeah. no, you can't. No. no, that's not how this works. Like, that's too no. easy. Mm -hmm. And so these guys start mentoring. They, they find guys and they start mentoring and teaching. And I've had a bunch of guys come back in and go, so uh, sold my business. And all I'm doing now is mentoring. Yeah. And they're like, it's free, but it's paying me. Like, I've never been more fulfilled my entire life. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other piece I think a lot of people are missing. They have this, they feel like there's this thing missing from their life. And it's that they're not giving back. And it's funny because you get so much from giving back yep. that it's, it's one of those things that sustains a bunch of people. So that's kind of what the book is about. It's just the, the things that I've noticed in the practice that a lot of people either have touched on, but not really put in the right order, mm -hmm. or they've heard about, but don't really know about, or they just, they're like, I'm lost, help me out. And so that's basically what the book is about. Um, and it's, I tried, it's funny because I wrote this giant book and my editor was like, this is really nice. No one's going to read it. Nobody's going to read 700 pages. <laughs> right. And she was like, you need to make this like much shorter. And so I did. And so it's like 170 pages, something like that. So, um, but that's kind of, that, that's kind of how we put it together. Uh, and it's kind of an intro, you know, we talk about how there's no such thing as gallstones. We talk about how important, you know, how unimportant cholesterol levels are and, you know, how important hormone function is and all those little things in there. So it's, it, it was really fun to kind of put together. That's awesome. I mean, I know just my personal experience getting myself in order and I know like you've seen a little bit of it or whatever, but it is crazy to, to me um, when you do that more finite testing and you start to look at the numbers and, you know, I'm a 36 year old female, not in like optimal health, I'm in decent health. And they're like, the numbers are like, your cholesterol is high. And, you know, my doc is like, I'm not worried about it. Like th that number is so irrelevant because it's because of this, you have gut issues, you have all these other issues going on that's causing all this. And you don't think about those things. You don't, you don't think about your gut issues causing hormone issues that's causing connection issues with your spouse that's, or, and or causing connection issues with your employees and all this because your gut, because your hormone nobody thinks about how all these things are connected. Well, and the problem is, is that we should, um, we should. you know, the, one of the other issues that, and this is the separation between like a concierge and a general practice doc is again, it goes back to, it's not all about money, but we do want to feed our families. Um, a lot of times you're doing insurance. It's how many people in a day can I see? Yeah. So the quality goes down so that volume can come up concierge. It's, you've paid for the time. I'm spending time with you. I'm going to work with you and only with you. And this, in this time you have my cell phone number. We're going to work on these things. One of the things I thought was hilarious. Um, and again, this goes back. We talked a little bit earlier about, you know, if I say something to 10 people and they all miss it, it's my fault, not theirs. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because we talk about how simple creatures men are, you know, as long as we have food and sex, we're generally pretty solid. Right. Um, and, we'll get women in. And, and so we'll, we'll work on them and get them healthier and, you know, get their testosterone levels back up. So that they're, you know, all of a sudden they have energy again and they have orgasm function come back and all of a sudden they enjoy sex again. And so they're having more sex and they come in and they're like, you know, I don't know what it is. I think you've really helped me deal with my anger because my husband and I have been getting along a lot better lately. And I'm like, well, thank you for the anger comment. Yeah. That, you know, that's, that's a nice compliment, but I don't think that it's the anger. Yeah. <laughs> it's if you're having, 
if you're having, if you went from once a month to once a week, you think the guys will put up with a lot more. We're a lot less grumpy. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, that's a thing. And I'm like, I I'm sorry. I thought we all have been telling you this for a long time, <laughs> that it is a thing. Like we're not trying to, we're not trying to, we're not trying to hide the ball here. No. So that's been, that's been a fun piece. What's, what's also funny is we'll get people in and they'll be like, all right, like, so I want you to, I want you you worked with me. I feel so much better. My sex drives up. I feel awesome. I feel 20 years younger. Can you do it for her? And I'm like, yeah, we can help her out. Like if well, we're going for sex drive, they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can fix that right now. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, get her a nanny and a maid. Yep. And they go, what? And I'm like, dude, look, if she's fantasizing about getting in bed and falling asleep at 4 p.m., you're, you're not, there's no success for you at 8 p.m. No. Let's just, yeah, you know, let's just break that one down right now. So, you know, sex driving a woman is how much sleep, how much rest and how nice you are to her. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, we have a good friend that he has harped on it for years. It's deposits and credits. And you, he goes, I make my deposits. He goes, I take the trash. I do this. I do that. I do that. And then when it's time to pull the credits out of the account, I have all these credits because I've made all these deposits. It's just that simple. And you're right. When I don't have to think about the dishes, when I don't have to think about all this other stuff, it's like, well, okay, what else am I going to do? I'm awake. Might as well. Yeah. And I'm in the mood because, you know, I, my stuff's working. So. Well, and the, you know, the other side of that is that it's, it's, it's communication. It's it like a lot of times people don't understand. Sex is at the top of our list as guys. Right. It's not at the bottom, but it's closer to the bottom with women. So if you take all the other stuff off their list, it percolates up to the top. <laughs> so, so this is, this shouldn't be a mystery to us. So, no. but apparently sometimes it is. It is. So tell me, um, because we have talked about getting out um, some of the things that people need to do as part of that connectedness, not only connection to other people, but for me, connection to nature, connection to uh, energy. I know you use the term spirituality in your book. Um, and, you know, I am very spiritual, but it also means energy to me. Uh, what energy is going on in the world? What energy am I getting from, you know, I'm somebody that really likes water. I find peace and happiness and, and, you know, uh, anytime I'm near water. Um, but I have to regularly do that for myself. Do you ever have patients that come in that you're like that? And to be clear, this concierge service, your target demographic are entrepreneurs, high performing business leaders. Um, I know you mentioned before we hit record, like, you have a CEO that comes to you and then all of a sudden they're like, I need you to fix my entire C-suite, you know, and then there's 12 guys or, or a mix of 12, you know, six guys and five women that are coming in to get them all performing optimally so that the business keeps moving. And so what yeah. are some things that, you know, you help them with? Um, so as far as, as far as getting out um, and it's always funny because, People will come in and they're like, they're like, man, I got massive sleep issues. I can't get to sleep. I can't do this. I'm not. And I'm like, okay, do you really want this fixed? And they're like, yes, that's why I'm here. And I'm like, no, do you really yes. want it fixed? Because I can fix it in three. I can fix it in three days with no drugs or supplements. And I said, and it's gonna be pretty cheap, but it's gonna take. It's gonna cost you time. Yeah. And they're like, I'll do anything. I'm like, cool, go camping. I'm like, take no electronics, none. And they're like, why? Well, what happens, and so everyone's familiar, well, to a degree, with melatonin and serotonin. So mm -hmm. what happens is that the way our brains are set up is that as the sun comes down, melatonin comes up. As the sun starts to rise, melatonin comes down, serotonin comes up. And that's the way it's designed to function. The reason that that doesn't work for us very well now is because we'll work ourselves in front of a bright computer screen or a cell phone with all the lights in the room on until 11 o'clock at night, turn them off and go, I wonder why I can't fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. Your brain doesn't know it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. So, but if you go camping for a couple of days and you let the sun dictate your circ circadian rhythms, it'll help reset them. And that's why I tell people, you just need to go and do it now. But if you take the iPad with you and you're like, Oh, it's, it's super nice. I'm going to stay up and watch three episodes of, of, Netflix and like now it's midnight and you're still staring at a flashy screen. You've just eliminated the whole purpose of going. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's one of the things that I like about it. The other thing is that from an energetic standpoint is 
and this is more of a quantum physics piece, is that the resonant frequency of the earth and the resonant frequency of the human body is almost identical. So this gets into the concept of grounding as well. So if you go out into nature, take your socks and shoes off and stand on the dirt, we start to harmonize with the energetics of the earth and it flushes out and repolarizes re and cleanses our meridian system, so the, the system from acupuncture, um, which is our third communication system. And it helps the body just kind of get back to basics. And a lot of people who do this regularly, you'll say, why do you do that? Why do you go out and just stand in nature and just close your eyes and breathe? And they'll say, I can't explain it, but I just, I feel things just melt off me. I just kind of feel myself unwind and I feel myself just kind of the breathing changes. I feel like I'm getting more air. I just feel like I'm getting fed. And I just, I, I don't know, man, I just feel totally different when I'm out in nature. And that's why it's an actual physics-based resonant frequency that actually feeds the body. So getting out into nature, being away from the electromagnetic haze, being away from the steel concrete grids, being away from that stuff and being you know, closer really helps. So there's lots of us, back to that water comment, there's a lot of us that if you can stand and look out your window at water, your stress levels drop 50, 60% mm -hmm. just because you can see water. Not everybody's like that, but a lot of us are. Um, and what's funny is that the lake will help, but it's, it's an order of magnitude off of an ocean. And for some reason, that salt water, the way the waves come in, the whole deal, that, that whole thing for water people, lakes are great. Ocean is a substantially higher order energetic piece. So, that's that's one of those things that you know and you'll talk to a lot of people that have small cuts or something like that and they're like if i go to the beach and i get in the ocean my cuts heal in a day or two yeah. at home it takes me five or six days and yeah there's a lot to be said for the salt water and that type of thing but it's there's a lot there's a bigger piece to it so getting out in nature is extremely important for all varieties of health um, and i think that people are starting to recognize that the more we go through the millennials are actually really good at trying to balance work life and that's one of the things that they they do the most is there's a lot of camping there's a lot of on the beach type of stuff that they do so that's yeah. that's really been been interesting to see i will tell you that grounding is something i'm not um habitual at it yet but it's something i try to do at least once if not twice a week and you're right you cannot explain it you like to just stand there in my front yard and, you know, at 5 a.m., nothing else is going on in the world, to, you know, in my little world here, but to feel the, the breath and the energy, you can't explain it. Like there's, there's just something that you feel through your body and you're like, what is this? And you just keep yeah. going. <laughs> well, and it's one of those things I try to get people to do because if they're like, I have stress issues and we're trying to restructure their day to deal with their stress. If they wake up to an alarm, one of the things I like to do is like wake up 10 minutes earlier buy a coffee machine or a tea making machine that has a timer on it so that you can wake up, stumble out of bed, grab your coffee, walk outside, sit in a plastic or wooden, no metal chair, barefoot, wrap a blanket around you if you need to, face east, watch the sun come up for 10 minutes while you just sit there and have your morning tea or morning coffee. It will radically shift the stress levels of the day because that alarm kicks you into a stress response so if you go outside and then ground and just sit and breathe for 10 minutes, that stress comes back down. So you start here instead of starting up here. And that's a really big piece when we start, when I work with people about structuring their day for stress function, that's a really good one that people can start doing kind of day one to kind of balance those things out. So the grounding piece you can do every day if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know every morning, you know, we have a, our deck is covered. And so I will sit out there every morning. I do my coffee. I do my journaling. I do my reading. Um, you know, of course I have neighbors that you can see their houses, but I'm mostly trees on, on, um, three sides. So just that I enjoy listening to nature come alive, you know, when you can hear two, three birds, and then all of a sudden the sun starts to come up and then everything just comes alive. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, you know, being type a being controlling, always need, you know, building a business, building other businesses, things like that. Um, I'm very much in control of everything, but what that reminds me of is I have no control over the billions of things happening in nature that literally none of us can do anything about. Yeah. 
I mean, nature will keep evolving around us. So it constantly reminds me that like, it puts me back into perspective that I am a small speck, your business, whatever it could, yes, it could be a hundred million dollars and you are the top guy in your, you know, uh, arena or whatever, but you actually in this world are a small speck. Well, there's, there's a small speck piece, but I like to look at it just a little bit different. We're a small piece in a very large system. Mm -hmm. That system is working for us and working with us. Exactly. So, we, which is why, which is also why if someone stares at you in the back of the head, you feel it mm -hmm. and you turn around and you catch people staring at you. There's no sensation that we know of, no visual, no hearing, no nothing that does that. And every single human being who's over the age of 10 can tell you, I felt them staring at me. There's no, there's no explanation for it, but we do it. Mm -hmm. We know people are talking about us. We know we can feel people looking at us, those type of things. And it's because of the connection through that. And so exactly what you're talking about, it's that, that harmonizing. So when we leave and we run our own thing and we do our own thing, we stress ourselves out, we push ourselves too hard, we make a chaotic energetic field. When we go back to nature, it's always harmonized. Mm -hmm. And so we can bring our harmony back to it. And so that's, that's, that's the big piece, at least for me, is kind of rejoining the, the universal you know, flow, if you will. Yeah. Okay. So how do you stay connected? You're obviously doing big things in the world. So how do you stay connected, grounded, live those pillars of, of what you teach? So um, I do lots and lots of, I take a ton of supplements. I work out every single day. Um, I try to do two coffee enemas a week. Uh, I spend an hour a day, a concentrated hour a day with my kids. And then the weekend, I usually dedicate the vast majority of it to them. Um, but the, we, I do a lot of psychological work and, and personal development work myself. Um, and I've, I've, over the past 20 something years, I've worked really hard at, you know, like we were talking about earlier, um, recognizing when things are my fault and when I need to work on them. So mm -hmm. like I use the illustration of, you know, if you tell one person something and they don't get it, that's their fault. If you tell 10 people and none of them got it, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. And so if trying to figure things out like that, trying to figure out why things aren't going the way I want them to go, uh, figuring that out. I'm also a little bit, I'm also kind of weird. Uh, I love challenges in the book. I talked about, I love it. We're like, when we're doing a business deal or we're setting up a new company, we're trying to do something and someone says, well, we can't do that. That's illegal. That is my favorite thing to hear because it's almost never really illegal. It's just hard. Yeah. And I'm like, sweet. That means our competition is not going to do it. They're going to hear right. it's illegal. and They're going to give up. So how do we make this work? And my lawyers have gotten to the point. They're just like, Oh my God, I can't tell you it's, it's illegal. Cause you're not going to let me get off on that. And so they'll come back and like, all right, we got to pay $10,000 for a permit. And I'm like, fantastic. Let's do it. Yeah. They're like, no one else is going to pay for the permit. Like, we're going to be the only guys in the space. Yeah, let's go. And they're like, okay. And they don't get it. And we do it. And then like six months later, you know, the thing took off great. And they're like, man, I'm, this is amazing. I'm, just, I'm so shocked that this worked. I'm like, how are you shocked? Everybody wanted this and nobody paid the 10 grand. We're right. the only guys in the space. If we sucked at what we do, it doesn't matter. We're the only guys here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like challenges like that. I like, I like when things go sideways and because I view them as, not like things are falling apart, but like, ooh, fun, fun new. What do I get to play with now? Cool. Yes. Let me get this going. <laughs> so, and that's that's kind of the whole thing of like that's the fun thing. So, like all the docs I know, either call me or send me their patients when they can't figure it out, mm -hmm. because they know that I will spend legitimately the next sixty waking hours obsessing about this thing until I come up with a solution that will get us somewhere down the road. Somewhere. Yeah. So, and and I take great pride in that, and so those things really help. Um, and of course I have, I have an amazing staff. My, my office manager, Rachel is a spectacular human being. My, uh, associate, my partner, Bethany, um, I gave her equity cause she's so good at what she does. Um, she helps me tremendously. And my wife is the most amazing human being on earth. So that helps out a lot. Um, so that's kind of how I keep all of the chaos in my life contained. Mm-hmm. How do you, so if you were to give somebody a couple of tips for advice, like what, what would you say is the first, I don't know, one, two, three things that they need to do 
to get started on optimal health, to get, to make sure they're not the guy that thinks they're fit and, and, and perfect. And then they're running this business. It's everything is just great. And then all of a sudden let's hope they don't die, but they have a heart attack or they go down or whatever. Um, what are those, those pieces of advice you would tell them? So the number one thing, um, and there's a couple of different things that we usually do. The number one thing that I tell people is find a way to deal with and balance the stress in your life. If you're a high end, high end individual, you're never going to not have stress. The idea of, well, you should get rid of your stress. Not possible. If you walk into somebody who's a high end individual and you're like, here's a hundred million for your business. We'd be like, great. We're not going to go sit on the beach. We'll relax for two weeks and go, Hey, there's this other thing for like the past six months I've been thinking that I could, I could do, and I'm going right. to, I'm going to start a new business and I'm going to work just as hard at that. So we're never going to stop. Exactly. So that's, the, you can't, you can't remove it. And I, you know, I love my wife. I love my kids. I love what I do, but it brings me stress. And so I have to find a way to offset that. So, you know, that's why I, I wake up in the morning and I work the way I do at 4 a.m. is because that's my alone time. Like mm-hmm. that's, I love that time. Um, I work out in the middle of the day to, to bring my, my stress levels back down. I meditate and read, read and spend time in the hyperbaric chamber at night to, again, you know, from my, from my two o'clock when I end my workout until my six thirty seven 7 o'clock when I get home, you know, and then I put the kids down when it's okay. Now I'm going to spend some time just chilling out and relaxing. So I, I set that point as well. So making sure that you control the stress of your day, you balance it, you take the supplementation that you need to take, the methylated B vitamins, the CoQ10, the, you know, the omega acids, the EPA, DHA, those type of things. Um, so managing stress is the number one. Um, number two would be, you got to get the test done that you have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Like go ahead and throw like, and it's not a lot. Like, it's like a thousand bucks, like throw some money at your health, you know, get your calcium CT and get somebody who knows how to read it. Um, work with, you know, get, get real blood work done, not just a CBC CMP, but like get your hormones run, mm-hmm. you know, get some other stuff done. Um, and then, you know, get a sleep study done. It would be, you would, it would shock you how many people have massive, massive health issues because they're not breathing properly at night. Right. And we do a sleep study and I'm like, dude, you're, you're dead. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, how are you at six o'clock at night? They're like, well, I'm tired, but it's six o'clock at night. And I'm like, you shouldn't be tired at 6 p.m. Right. If you get up at three, maybe. Do you get up at three? They're like, no, I get up at 6.30. And I'm like, well, that's, that's less than 12 hours. Yeah. You're telling me that you're tired after less than 12 hours and you think that's normal? They're like, well, no one's ever talked to me about it. I'm like, well, you've had the wrong docs. So getting a sleep study done is really important. Um, if you're a CEO or you're an athlete, my big, my big thing is I always tell people, if you're a CEO or you're an athlete, you're a high-end, high-pressure, high-volume individual, you should never see a normal person doctor. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you don't take the twin turbocharged W12 Ferrari engine to a Toyota Corolla specialist. Right. It's just not what you do. And I see people every day. I see athletes all the time who come in. They're like, yeah, my primary care doc's freaking out, telling me all these things, numbers and lab levels are terrible and I'm so unhealthy. And I'm like, hold on. So your ALT, AST levels, your liver levels are a little higher than they want. They're like, yeah. I'm like, did they ask you what your diet is? You're an athlete. I know I'm an athlete too. I know you're eating a ton of protein. And you're working out real hard. So the protein in your blood's going to be a lot higher, which is going to raise these levels. They're like, no, they didn't ask me that. I'm like, okay. Like, yeah, they're worried about my CK levels because they said that, you know, it's damaging the heart. CK is creating kinase. It comes from muscles. You work out every day, right? They're like, yeah. I'm like, then you're going to have more muscle breakdown in your blood. These are obvious things obvious they're missing, things. but they don't know how to look at them. Yeah. And, you know, because you're not the normal guy. So, or, or women. So, and that's the other piece. Women need testosterone. Mm-hmm. It is not a male hormone. It is a human hormone and women need it. And so I, I see woman after woman after woman who's tired, osteoporosis, no sex drive, no orgasms, just, they're just, they're done. Their brain's fried. And they come in, they're like, I don't know what's wrong. I'm like, you're, you have no testosterone. And we give them, you know, we, we rebalance some things, give them testosterone. And then within like three or four months, they come back and they're like, I can't remember ever feeling this good. And I'm like, yeah, your, your, your body's a machine. You just fix the physiology and it works right. Right. So that's all we had to do. And so there's a lot of that, that I don't know if people are being told improper information or they're just not being allowed to, to work on people properly, but 
there's there's a lot of that stuff that that women need that we're doing a really bad job from the medical community teaching them. For instance, you know, the reason female athletes blow their knees out 10 times more often than men is because their hips are designed differently than ours. Right. Instead of coming straight down, they pitch out at an angle, which is why y'all have hips. And that angle puts a ton more pressure on the knee. So if the pelvis gets out of alignment, like it does every time you have a menstrual cycle, you're going to put your rotate those femurs, putting more pressure at the hip and at the knee, but you have a butt, you've got all sorts of muscles around the hips. So you don't feel that you only have ligaments of the knees, which is why your knees hurt. And then you move, you cut or whatever done. Yeah. So that's rebalancing. That's a big piece too. So there's a lot of function that we do with women that I don't know why nobody does it. They just don't. From my latest research and reading and things like that, it's because a lot of the tests are not done on women. A lot of medical studies and things like that are primarily done with men. I I don't know that for sure. And I'm just certainly not a doctor, but you know, those things I'm like, well, why aren't we? But here, 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 here's the thing that I don't, I don't understand. There's no way I can tack it and understand it. Like if you're like, well, they just want to make money. Women are legitimately 50% of the population. So you're just not going to treat 50% of the population Mm -hmm, expecting the same amount of income. And I hate to tell you this, but guess who holds the purse strings in America? Yeah. Women do. So yeah. And a lot of this stuff, if you fix the women, all the stuff the guys want, they end up getting. Yeah. So that's something that I think, you know, it, it, just make, it makes no sense to me. And just from the side point of your people, like if you want, if you got into the, this, this profession to help people, why are you not helping women? Because they're, they're people, right. but you know, and then we get into things and I mentioned this in the lecture that I gave, you know, everyone wants to talk about breast cancer and breast mm-hmm. cancer is bad. I'm not arguing that breast cancer is good. What I'm saying is that 47,000 women a year die from breast cancer. And we should definitely talk about that. 250,000 women a year die from heart attacks. How often is that talked about? Right. It's more than five times the number. Nobody says anything. Nobody says and anything. How easy is it to prevent heart attacks? Calcium CT, you, get, you know, more antioxidant function, decreased stress, done. So it's, it's irritating to me that we have such an easy stats to look at and go, we can fix this. And no one does anything. And nobody does anything. And I think one point that I will make about the insurance, because I am on board with you, I cannot stand it. Um, But people don't do enough homework on their own insurance to figure out what they can do on their own. Case in point, you know, I went to a functional health uh, specialist None of it's covered, you know, they don't take insurance. Okay, fine. You know, here's the, the money that it costs. Um, but then I did, I called my insurance company and I just said, what will you cover? And they're like, well, maybe can you send over a, a bill? And I called the doctor and I said, can I get a super bill? Now I will tell you this. I come from a family in the medical space. My mom has been a medical biller for almost 30 years. I get that language. I know what to ask. I know what, you know, CPT codes are and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I knew what to ask and I, and I did ask it. Um, but just call your insurance company, like be a person and call and say, look, the doctor's not going to do it for me. Cool. But the doctor will give me a bill that I can then submit on my own and see if I'll get reimbursed. If you do cool, if not, whatever, you know, but well, try. The other piece of that is that there's a lot of times the insurance company will pay you when they won't pay us. Right. Because we're not their customer. You are. We are. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes that'll, that plays through. Um, and that works really, really well. Uh, but there's just so many things that just, we've kind of just gotten to the point where like, I'm done, I'm done with you guys. Uh, the rules and laws are different if we do cash versus we do insurance as well. Yeah. So, um, I was having this conversation with a buddy of mine a couple of days ago uh, and we're bringing him on as one of our concierge stocks. And he was like, I don't know about this and that. And I was like, ask your attorney. And he comes back. He's just with shocked look on his face. And he was like, he told me everything that we wanted to do was illegal. If we did it with Medicare was questionable due to contract if it's insurance and 100% legal. And everybody loves it. If we do it cash, I'm like, yeah, because it's the same thing. I was like, I oh, know. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's just, that's just the way our government has decided to do things. If you have the money, you can do anything you want. Yep. So it's, it, it is, 
it is an interesting position that we're all in. Right. So. Well, and I will say this, if you take, if you want to take your health seriously and everybody should, you, um, it, it, if the, if the cost is a challenge, skip doing a couple things that, you know, you're spending that money on, like you said, I, I, I mean, I've been to your website and I'll link, I'll put a link here so everybody can and look at it, but I've seen the cost of your tests and I'm like, okay, like that's nothing, you know, like, but to, to get the comprehensive test and, and, and all of that, I mean, shoot, that's, I'll say this. It's, some of them are less than a TV. So don't buy a new TV at Christmas. Get your health under control. You know, whatever. Uh, and the, it's just, it's yeah, and there's, there's, there's a lot of little things that are in there that, you, you know, it, it, I get it. Some things are expensive and we want, we want to focus on the bright, shiny stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, I guess, I guess not enough people have have gone to a funeral for somebody and been like, that guy's healthier than I was. Yeah. That guy was in better shape than me. Like, I don't know. And it's it, the other side of that is that I've, ne I never honestly knew what anxiety, stress or fear was until I had kids. Mm. So like, I would do stuff all the time. People are like, if you keep doing that, you're going to die. I'm like, yeah. mm. like, they're like, yeah, I'm like, whatever. And now it's just like, like if my kids aren't home, they're with my parents. If they're not home, I get a, just a little antsy. Like, wonder what, wonder, wonder, wonder what's, wonder what's going on with them. Yeah. What's, if they, if, uh, what they ate for dinner. Um, wonder what, so it's, you know, it, it's one of those things that a lot of people start to recognize because I love my kids, because I have my kids, I have to do something to make sure I am there for them. Yeah at the end of the day. And so that we get a lot of that as well It's like, Hey, I just want to make sure I'm going to be, I'm going to be alive in 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I love to start there because being alive when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 is important. Not nearly as important as the quality of life though. Yes. You know, if you'll ever go visit somebody who's 70 years old in a nursing home and be like, do you want that for you? Because you need to start now. One of the, yeah. the, the one of the things I always tell people is if you sail from Miami, Florida to Barcelona, Spain, and you're off by one degree, mm -hmm. you end up in a completely different country. So small problems over, over time create massive issues. Yep. And so if we can identify those small problems now, they're super easy to fix. I mean, one degree is that much. There you go. Fixed. Now we're going to end up where we want to go. So it's, you know, back and forth. And a lot of the guys we work with, I love, I love when people are like, yeah, I got to quit smoking. I'm like, hold up. Do you got to quit or do you want to quit? Because if you got to quit, you're never going to. Uh -huh. If you want to quit, we can work on that. And people are like, I like smoking. And I'm like, well, cool. Let's keep that in your life. I've been in two car wrecks that should have killed me. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow is not guaranteed. So if you, if you gain pleasure from smoking and you want to keep it, well, there's ways we can keep it in there. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if you smoke a pack a day, my first question is, do you enjoy all 20? And they're like, I, I don't know. Like I know that there's three or four or five you really enjoy. What if we cut back to say 10? You enjoy five, we're gonna double it, you get, you get 10. We've just cut your problem in half. And now we just give the supplementation nutrition to balance it and everything will be okay. And people are like, I didn't know that was a thing. I'm like, you've, because you've never worked with somebody who's willing to build a package around you, around right. your life and what you want. Right. You know. So they just, they just told you to quit smoking. You're like, okay, yeah, I gotta do that. Right, and eat better. What, what is that? What mean? is eat better? Yeah. So and, and I love, I always love it when they're like, well, everyone should be keto or vegan or whatever. And it's like, okay, you think everyone on the planet has the exact same biochemistry. That is no. the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The yeah. fact that you call yourself a doctor and have said something like that makes me very sad for whoever accredited your university. Yeah. So yeah. I've, I've had people come in and it's, it was, oh, I felt so bad, but the wife is Chinese and uh, the husband is from Alaska and he has Inuit Alaskan in his heritage. He needed to be carnivore. So straight meat, she needed to be vegan. And I'm like, I feel horrible for y'all at dinner time. Yes. Because there couldn't be a more polar opposite need, mm -hmm. but because of their genetic heritage and their blood and the way, just the way their bodies are built, they needed radically different fuel. And they yeah. both felt like hell because they were trying to help each other. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. you, you can't, you can't. I'm, this is, this isn't going to work for you guys. 
so we split them up. We gave them totally different diets. And now they're super healthy. They feel awesome and they love it. It's just because we changed that chemistry. Well, so, and it's when somebody comes to you and says, eat healthy. I mean, I can't tell you how many years that I ate chicken and broccoli because I was eating healthy and then did nutrition testing this year and found out that broccoli is high uh, on my list of things not to eat that and coconut. So how much coconut milk did I drink instead of dairy milk? How much, you know, am I putting cinnamon in this to, to flavor it and cinnamon's on my list and raspberries and tomatoes and like all these things that are health, quote unquote healthy, but they're not good for me. Right. And, and, and that's, that's the key. So, and we do, we'll do blood tests and stuff like that. Um, I always, I always wait until we clean up the gut. Uh, before we do any blood tests for food allergies or until we do muscle testing. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is the example I use is let's say you have a t-shirt and it's your favorite t-shirt, super comfortable. You love the way it feels. You love the way you look in it. It's just your favorite shirt. You go to the lake and you get a bad sunburn. You come back and put that same t-shirt on and now it hurts. Mm -hmm. Well, that same t-shirt that you normally love hurts because your skin is inflamed. If your gut is inflamed, foods that normally wouldn't create a problem now will. Yeah. And so we got to fix the gut, clean the gut up, use the liver to draw the inflammation out of it, put it back together. And then a lot of these foods that you're sensitive to, you're no longer sensitive to. Sure. And we have a, we have a real fun German technology. Uh, I can desensitize people to allergies. So if you come in and you're like, hey, I love broccoli and cinnamon uh, and peanuts, but I can't eat them because it tears me up. I'm like, all right, well, we can desensitize you so you're no longer some of them we take like from a 10, like you eat it and die down to like a three where it just kind of is uncomfortable. And some of them we take from a six to a zero where you can, wow. eat, you can eat it and you have zero problems. So um, that's always highly beneficial for a lot of people who you know, are picky. And mm -hmm. so they eat like 12 things yeah. and half of the things they're eating are sensitive to. Yeah. So we're like, look, I'll just, we'll fix this. And so you can go back to your, your, your diet. And, the other piece of that is people are like, well, shouldn't you eat lots of fruits and vegetables? Not really. The, the mineral and vitamin content of our food is so, so bad now right. that you're going to have to supplement no matter what you eat. So you eat for energy and fat content, you supplement for health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just the way, unfortunately, it's where we have to be. Yeah. So, well, Dr. Tramos, I know that it's almost end of your day. So I don't, I want you to get home to the kids. So thank you. This has been an amazing conversation. Um, I love talking performance and health and optimal and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this has been awesome. Thank you so much um, for your time and for sharing, gosh, so much wisdom with everybody. So absolutely. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you for listening today. As you can tell, I am pretty passionate about business, camping, and balancing them both in my daily life. If you want to connect with me more, I included all the links in the show notes, including my camping brand, Pull Through Sites, my personal pages, and also a really quick questionnaire to figure out how I can help customize your camping experience. I appreciate you, and I hope you got something out of the show today. If you did, please, please share this with someone else who needs to hear it and leave a review. If you leave a review, I'll send you a free copy of my book, How Camping Saved My Life, The Journey from Hospital Bed to Nature. Thanks again. Talk soon.